Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Erwin, I start with you. Like a general question, like a philosophical one. What does innovation mean for you? Well, Hansa, um, I think today there were two quotes of people very touching for me. One was of, uh, a quote from, from Theodore in the morning, when she was asked by Jaroslav whether she still has some old school habits. And her answer, which I think was quite surprising for, for some of us, was yeah, she still writes emails. For me, it was a kind of a deja vu, um, because it, re it reminded me a conversation which I had today in the morning with my 20-year-old son, Christoph. Christoph asked me what I'm going to do today, and um, I told him, well, you know, I go to this conference on innovation. And he stared at me and said, Daddy, what are, what are you doing on a conference on innovation? I said, well, you know, um, it's, it's interesting. I meet inspiring people. We are sponsoring this, and actually, I'm also a speaker. And, um, by the way, I consider myself a very innovative person. I mean, I have a, a top-level uh, mobile phone, I have a notebook, I have a Facebook account, I have a LinkedIn account, um, I have an Instagram account, okay, I don't know how it works, and I don't have a Twitter account, but otherwise, I think I'm quite innovative. And Christopher again stared at me and said, you know, Daddy, I think you're the least innovative person <laughs> in the world I know, among others, because you still use emails. And I think Theodora and also my son Christopher, when they are right, I mean, email, for this generation, obviously, it's not innovation, it's, um, it's standard. And the other quote was from Luigi, this, um, this lawyer, lawyer fr and professor from Italy, who said that he expects from lawyers uh, knowledge and understanding of technology. Yeah. And um, I would go even probably one, one step further, because I expect also um, understanding of business, in the ideal case, also management skills. And I think this is probably one of the, the biggest challenge uh, for us lawyers, because somebody who studies business, goes to business school, they studied for four or five years, then they perhaps take a postgraduate in one of these fancy international business schools, of course they have management skills. We lawyers, uh, we, 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 we study for five years, I don't know, constitutional law, we study civil law, we study family law, and then we expected to have management skills. And these are just one of these few challenges we, we lawyers face every day, and they haven't even talked about challenges during COVID times. Um, but you know, in order to answer your question, I think a law firm is then innovative when it uh, manages to adapt to these daily, cha daily changing challenges best. I have to, Robert uh, Promenade, I will, I will come to you immediately. <laughs> a question, because we, we know each other for, 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 for a couple of years, <laughs> and you know the and, and, uh, just funny stories about your son, the reaction. So, <laughs> is there any progress during the years that he sees you a little bit more innovative than, I don't know, five years ago? I'm afraid not. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, the, the, nearly the same question to you, maybe a little bit change. Do, do we need innovation? Uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Jan, I'm a competition lawyer, so I will bring a perspective that was not here uh, so far, I believe. Because uh, the innovation uh, is important source of competition. Competition among the legal professionals, and I believe that that's the answer. If we want to compete with you guys, uh, we need to innovate. We, ne we need to bring new services to, to, to the clients. But even more importantly, I would like to stress that uh, there would be no innovation without competition. The competition is the, uh, competition is the source of the innovation. So if we do not have uh, competition in our area, we, do, we will not have uh, innovation. So, so we, will, uh, we, we need competition in order to, um, to, to have uh, innovation in our, uh, our area. So, so yes, of course, I mean, um, Speaking about law, our law firm, we are the largest in, in the Czech, Czech Republic and Slovakia, and we want to stay the largest, we want to stay successful, so we need to meet the, uh, the, the client's need, and that's actually my uh, definition of uh, uh, innovation in the legal services. It's, uh, it always needs to be the client-driven, not uh, the legal professional-driven. So uh, we need to know what are the needs of the client or what will be the needs of the client uh, in future. That's a very difficult question, but this, this is the only meaningful innovation to fulfill the client's need uh, that uh, they probably are not aware yet of. 
<laughs> this is a good this is a good good point what you mentioned at the at the end and that is what I wanted to ask isn't it a little bit that we need to educate about the what's really needed and what we can bring for the value and maybe as a profession you know the mm -hmm. I think that it was it was it was Nicholas who mentioned in the morning that sh we should we should avoid fear mm -hmm. that there the pie is big enough yeah? the which I fully agree with but the pie is not just for law firms yeah? and I believe that if we do not innovate as law firms if we do not innovate enough then there is, there is a the, the, the slogan of of Deloitte legal what we have the the world is changing and we know the world is changing but if we do not innovate it will change in a way that we do not drive yes. it will change in a way that somebody else will drive and already now you see that like legal tech and everything around the it, it's it's uh, i don't want to be negative but it's eating a lot of that pie yes, so i course. think that we need to innovate to be at the table as well yeah i actually went through the notes from the last year's uh, uh, year's conference and i twice noted uh, the, uh, the quote from Wayne Gretzky, you need to skate where the puck is. So, uh, so the, I liked uh, the, this quote so much that I, I think it's, uh, and I, I would amend it, uh, I think you need to skate where the puck will be, uh, not where the puck is. Uh, so yes, I agree. But on the other hand, I, I would warn against uh, one size fits all uh, solution because um, we had a fantastic presentation uh, by uh, Lucas Zapletal here, and I fully, fully agree with uh, everything what he said. But we have other clients that live in the different environment, and you have to accommodate the kind of service to the client's need, not to the way how you feel that uh, the clients need to be served. Would you like to comment on that? I absolutely agree. No, nothing to add. <laughs> so, so maybe just back what what you said with the uh, uh, with the young people that they are no, not trained or lawyers are not trained in the technology and the and the, and the business management and so on. And so, is this their fault or is it something we owe to the people? Uh, the, the, because the the I uh, what's interesting now and specifically for law firms. I think that we are losing the attractivity for the students of law. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, the, and I, I, I saw some studies saying that uh, never in the history were so many uh, people who, are, who, uh, uh, who successfully passed the, the, the legal faculty, but they don't want to practice law. They would like to do something different or a little, maybe a mixture. They don't want to practice law. And if you see the rankings, I'm sure that, 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 that you see the rankings of the, uh, of the students about the attractivity of the, of the employers in the law area, like 10, 15 years ago, like first 10 were only law firms, magic circle and everything. And now, I think that you are the first one and you are like 15 or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And then maybe like till, till the first uh, 30 or another five, mm -hmm. six. So, so why is it? Then can, can, we, can we change that? Well, um, if, if I may comment on this. Um, and this is something, that, that the lesson which I have learned, uh, or which I had to learn in the, in the last years, um, when, when, when I had a lot of discussions uh, just with, 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 with young people on just business hours, how, how, how long have you to stay in work? And I actually I didn't understand the discussion because I said, well, you know, when, when I was an associate, I mean, quite, quite a long time ago, but I invested all my, my time because my goal was always to become as soon as possible partner. And I had to understand that for those people who start with us today, they have different goals. Um, and work-life balance, for instance, is this um, beautiful description of what, what, they, what they expect. And if, if, we, if we don't adopt to this, and again, it's about um, change management, we simply have to say, well, uh, for those people, in order to be attractive as a law firm, uh, I simply have to accept that um, there are other interests. And um, if I cannot adopt and, and change to their needs, then I will not guess the best talent. Yeah, uh, I, I think the first starting point, which is not easy, is to 
uh, recognize that the problem is on our side, not on their side. So if we, we, we cannot stay and say, well, those young people uh, do not understand what they need, uh, we need to change. Uh, and I think, uh, I'm, uh, speaking for our firm, we try to, uh, um, uh, to um, keep our firm uh, open for new promotions, for example. So, so we want to, 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 to give uh, young people the perspective that they may become a partner quite, quite soon, and we try to uh, be uh, understood in this way. But I, I don't think that it's the, the, the only solution. I think uh, the priorities changed, and uh, uh, we need to find a complex solution. Uh, we need to... Um, uh, uh, enable those young people uh, to feel that they are working for some general purpose. I mean, I mean, in, in the general interest on projects. That's that that are those those things that attract young people, and we need to find the way how to deliver th those uh, projects to them. Perhaps just one one comment from my side. I think we also have to. It must be clear to all of us that, I mean, there are a lot of law firms on the market now. And, and uh, on, on one side, we have to be attractive that the, these students decide becoming a lawyer and want to work in a law firm. But uh, there are so many competitors, international firms, national firms here. So uh, it's always about, about uh, the difference. And it's very difficult um, to, to offer the difference. I fully agree, but if you speak about the competition in that sense, that, like that we compete for the best people, it's, it's much more colorful. It's not only about law firms, because really, the, if you do not follow, if you, if, if you have not seen like, the attractivity of the employees' area, legal area, let's have a look. I, I believe you will find it on the, on the internet. And you will see who are really the Czech army, for example. Yeah, and, and others and others. Yeah. So this is we have. It's much more colorful than, than only law firms. And I think that we are now we are not the best one, and, and, and we are losing. But Roberto, you said I, I think that very interesting uh, point, and it was uh, in the morning. Christoph mentioned that about the legal profession that the lawyers do not want to serve clients only, but also the society. Yeah. And I think it applies to the to, to the younger generation even more than than than, than, than our generation. Yeah. And I think that this, this, this is something what they want. Yeah. The Deloitte has a, generally has a slogan, impact that matters. Yeah. And that's exactly what they want. And I think that if we are able to do it in a clever way, that we really develop the, 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 develop the, the practices that, that we help the society and do it in a clever way that we are also paid for that, then we will be the winners. No, I, I absolutely agree, and uh, although I'm more than 40, I still feel young, and uh, I also feel that I need to work for society. So, so I think it's even more for young people, and we, uh, as I said, I mean, we need to offer this opportunity even uh, if they work for the, law, for the law firm. So, so it's a change of paradigm, in my opinion, and it brings me to the fact that we recently, in our firm, uh, adopted kind of like ten commands, ten commands, uh, ten commands. How to how to do our business? Uh, it's very simple, simple commands like uh, like uh, be complex, be innovative. But one of the commands is uh, help others. I mean, because we need uh, to establish this. Uh, uh, this feeling, this uh, this atmosphere within our our law firm, in order uh, to enable them to identify with the brand and uh, to the CSR and so on, and th this might be one of the key. I think it was mentioned by several speakers today, and it was the word collaboration, and I think this is where we are moving. It's it's to, to change the mindset, like from the from two sides to collaboration, doing things together. Uh, I think th this is the key, and if you give the clients the, uh, the feeling that you really collaborate, then yeah. that's the best way. And I, I would add not only co cooperate with the, with the client, but uh, uh, cross uh, cooperate with the other professions. Uh, that's something that we did in our, in our firm, that we combined the legal and economic uh, advice. And, and it was worth, I mean, it's, it's not without uh, some issues, but uh, it proved to be the right direction. So, so I would say I would uh, uh, be happy to introduce a new combination uh, of, of the legal advice and some, something else. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> but as you said, it's not easy <laughs> to, combine the, to combine the professions. 
uh, question. How, how was it with, with, uh, in a, in a uh, COVID situation and the lockdown? So how you were able to manage uh, people? Were not you worried that people will stay at home and just play on, on PlayStation and, and don't work? And how was it with clients? I think, I think we did quite well, and I don't mean we in the sense of TeleOS thing, but I think we in the sense of most law firms in the Czech Republic. And I think, again, it showed that um, this is an, an observation which I have already some, some years, that uh, law firms in CE are very much, at least in my, my eyes, very much technology driven. And uh, again, it showed, I think, uh, when we, all of us, within a couple of days, I mean, or even one or two days, we had to go to, to a home office in the mid of March, if I, if I remember correctly. And if I compare this, I mean, we, we have the six offices in six countries, and Austria is our um, kind of a mother, mother company. Even they, of course, they, they of course managed to do so, but not as fast as we did. And um, so I think, um, f f to, to answer the question, I, th I think we, we did quite well. Um, it was a challenge. It was a challenge uh, not only to manage people, Everybody's sitting at home. I had a lot of video conferences, probably all of us um, had in the, the last, last couple of months. Um, and the clients, of course, were in the same situation. And um, I think we, we really did better. Then I was a little bit concerned in, in, in March if, 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 if we would, would manage to, to cope with the situation. Roberto, your experience? Well, uh, yes, uh, the first experience from the very beginning of the lockdown was that uh, our firm became uh, electronized within one day. So it was, uh, 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 it was really incredible that we were able to go uh, completely online within one day. Uh, so, so this was first. And then uh, soon, uh, I personally speaking on behalf of my team, which is like 20 people, I soon decided that, that I have to be in the uh, regular contact with, with my colleagues, so we had uh, like uh, two uh, meetings per, uh, per week uh, to, to, to together and then I, then I called uh, to, to, to each of my junior uh, associates and senior associates to speak uh, in order, I would say, to stay in contact because, I mean, my personal situation was that I, I, I had my family and I had quite a lot of to do outside the work, but uh, some of our junior colleagues uh, were sitting uh, one month uh, alone at home, which, uh, of course, was a difficult situation. And then the client, I mean, the, the biggest challenge was to stay in touch with them, with them not to be too, too intrusive. Uh, so, so what uh, uh, paid in my, uh, in my experience was, uh, uh, I would say, occasional call to the client and saying, well, how are you? What, what are you doing? Do, do, you, do you want us some, some, uh, somehow uh, to help? Uh, but we tried, uh, I would say, we tried from the very beginning to serve uh, uh, like, like the source of important information. Uh, we established uh, um, our news feed regarding the legal situation, which was uh, quite popular. So it helped us to some extent to stay in touch with, with the clients. See, I, was, I, I, personally, I, I was surprised how many uh, young colleagues were really pushing to go back to the office. Hmm. Uh, I, 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 I positively, to, I'm positively surprised. How, I, I, really, I many people to, wanted to go back to the office. I, w I wanted to mention this because if, if I remember how often in the last couple of years I had a discussion whether somebody may go on home office or not. And suddenly we don't have this discussion anymore. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the, but to me, uh, and, and my personal feeling is that, uh, you know, because we can hear a lot uh, like optimism about how, how, how we very well connected electronically and so on. We did it as we were, we were prepared, everything was fine. But I, I, I miss the, like the personal contact with the people and so on. And, and, and to lead the team mm. without the personal contact, it's a diff you, I think that you can do it for a couple of months when you see the, the, uh, the, the light at the end of the tunnel. But to imagine that it would be like for more and more months, I, I think that it's, it's, it's very, very difficult. And then you are... My feeling is that you are sometimes you, you are losing the, 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 the contact. Yeah, yeah I, I fully agree, and this applies to, to the client's care as well. I mean, you, as I said, you need to be flexible. So if a client uh, um, 
prefer, prefers uh, the online, uh, online advice, online discussion. Let's be prepared for that. But on the other hand, from like uh, early, ma uh, early May or late May, we were prepared to meet with the client once the situation become, uh, become better, because some of the clients uh, in specific areas uh, really preferred uh, in-person meeting, and uh, you need to be prepared to fulfill that. You know, this is why I'm also thankful that this conference today takes place here, thanks to Yaroslav, because, I mean, virtual conferences are also nice, but, but uh, it's always about networking. Yeah. And I think networking is only possible if you're real face-to-face. -face. And for me, it's really the first conference since, since March. And, yeah, I think it's, it's really, we can really be thankful that it took place, or takes place. Last question. Any, any dream in the innovation area? Uh, innovation area? Any? What, do you, what, do you, what, what, what would be your dream to achieve in the innovation area? <laughs> well, uh, well um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about innovation in a probably different... Uh, different. I, I always uh, want to keep my finger on the pace of the, of the, of the, of the time. So, so that means uh, uh, my dream is uh, really to serve every single need of, of, of my client. And I would like to work in the environment whereby the client comes to us and says, hey, I need a specific service. And I know that at the moment I do not provide a service, but until the next meeting I will find out how to do that. So that's, that's my notion of innovation. Erwin? <laughs> I was happy that it was the second to <laughs> answer this. <laughs> uh, I think my dream would be to, um, to, to find um, a possibility that we can meet more often uh, within, within the possibilities we have here. Uh, otherwise, I'm, what, what concerns innovation, I'm, I'm fine with what, what we have today. And um, yeah, I think nothing to add. Maybe the, what, 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 Roberto, what you said, the innovation, what does it mean? We can discuss a long time. But the, the, one of my colleagues now, now said the, I see it in a way that in Deloitte Legal, uh, we should approach it this way. We don't, we don't try to be the best lawyers. We should pursue the client that we will be the best, we, will, we are able to give them the best advice, the best mm -hmm. to help them. I don't know whether it's an innovation, but I like that. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.